Okay. Okay, here it goes. Okay, you all have to pardon me because I... This is, I'm technology is very new. Okay, so I don't know if I can get, they can get this on camera. I'm hoping they will. Um, my name is Diane Williams, and I'm teaching uh, the basics of Bible prophecy by Daryl Nunley and David Reagan. And the reason why I'm teaching this class is because, for one, um, I feel like prophecy is the key to understanding most of the scripture. And then two, um, I feel like our time on earth is getting really short, especially because of all the events in the last year. And I wanted everybody to have a really under understanding so they can take comfort that God has a plan. So I'm teaching this book, and I really relate to David Reagan and Mr. Um, Nunley, who wrote the book. And Mr. Nunley lives in Winchester, Kentucky. And um, David Reagan is in Texas, and he is, uh, was, that he just turned over because he's uh, older, but he just uh, turned over to Tim Moore, their ministry leader, and he wrote this book, and I followed David Reagan for years because uh, he uh, came from the same Brotherhood of Churches, and um, uh, which it was a millennial and um, really didn't study the Old Testament, didn't really study prophecy, and he had lots of questions, so that's what put it, I could relate a lot to that. So, um, and I was always really fascinated with um, Bible prophecy, the Old Testament, the Jewish people, I was always really fascinated by that. Even though I went to what is called the New Testament church. And I didn't realize for a long time that a third of the New Testament is, is the Old Testament, re-quoted. So, and that, and I also found it uh, really interesting that out of the, all the things that Jesus quoted from the, the uh, Old Testament, he quoted from Deuteronomy which a lot of people don't even study that book, you know, it's kind of a dry book. But anyway, and the purpose of this book, I always, I, t I really, I found this online. Um, the author was on a show, Christ and Prophecy. And um, I, when I discussed prophecy, it overwhelms people. With, and I thought, this is perfect because it, uh, was like a primer on how to use how to take the Bible and cross reference the prophecies, and um, it's also it shows that the Bible is like a concordance, you know, and you could use it as a concordance to clarify a prophecy that you don't understand. And there's lots of prophecies <laughs> that make, that make no sense until, uh, that haven't made sense until Jesus, or Jesus, Israel was restored to the land. A lot of prophecies didn't make sense until Israel came back into, um, the, and it's kind of like the bookend of history, the, uh, of uh, Christianity, I should say. You have the beginning where the Jews and the Christians were together, and then now at the end, you have the, it's kind of bookend. And um, uh, a lot of times, and it says, like Isaac Newton, he even recognized this in the 1600s, is that, you know, a lot of this stuff won't make sense till the end. And even Daniel said that. And Daniel said, he goes, what? You know, he heard all this stuff from God in the book of Daniel about uh, the tribulation and the Jews and all the stuff that was going to happen in the world. And he was like, what does that mean? <laughs> he asked that in, uh, I think it's Daniel 12. And he said, don't worry about it right now. Um, there'll be a t it, it, it's later, later on when people are running to and fro and knowledge will increase and um, uh, then people will start to understand. But then, even then, only a few will understand 
and the rest of the world will just continue to be wicked. But, you know, it's not for you to know right now. There's other things that need to happen, basically, is what he told Daniel. So, um, and that's turning out to be true. When you read the book of Revelation, a lot of the book of Revelation, we'll find out in this, um, a lot of the, a lot of the, in terms of Revelation, didn't make sense until uh, probably 40 or 50 years ago didn't make sense because the technology is all implied like hearing about different things from all over the world I mean how did that make sense to anybody seeing things happen and, and saying that you'll hear about earthquakes in diverse places well how because you know up until 30 or 40 years ago it was weeks before the world learned about something like that. So there's an implied technology in there that we didn't understand 40 or 50 years ago. Well, anyway, so in this in this first chapter, we haven't got the books yet, so in this first chapter, um, I'm gonna read some, uh, the importance of Bible prophecy in Christianity and why it's so essential to really understand what God the whole plan of God, you know, Jesus. And um, and then how dealing with the how the Jews are set apart and holy, and and that not because they're good, but just because he made promises to the Jewish people, and Jesus came through the line of the Jewish people, and that he will need to deal with them. <laughs> and he has a special week called Daniel's 70th week. And it'll, it's also known in the book of Jeremiah as the week of Jacob's trouble. Where, and, and we know it as the tribulation. And where he's going to finish all the prophecies. He's going to punish the wicked world. And it's not meant for the church. So, and a lot of pe people take that very, they think the church should is supposed to go for the but anyway we'll get into that I don't want to delve too far uh, off topic here but I'd like to try to do two weeks or two lessons a week and then if you take down my email you can send me questions and in the middle of the week I can do a answer those questions do you have a pencil here pencil and pen take down my email and I will answer those questions in a video, or I, we could meet at church and discuss it. Because you know you might, you might, and when the books come in, well, I'll distribute those books too. But um, it, uh, and it, because it just when I when when I had done this class before, it just generates so much discussion because people have so many questions. So anyway, starting in the first, um, first lesson, it's uh, 2 Peter 1, 19, and you'll be doing a lot of study in here, a lot of scripture reading. <laughs> and um, I think it's foundational too in discipling people for them to learn pro prophecy because it helps you uh, know God and be able to share it with others. So in 2 Peter 1, 19, so we have seen and proved that what the prophets said come true, you will do well to pay close attention to everything they have written, for like light shining into dark corners, their words help us understand many things that otherwise would be dark and difficult. And uh, here's some uh, 2 Peter 1, 20-21, Holy Spirit inspired utterances regarding the future. And I think I have a, uh, over here I have a, uh, I went ahead and typed up the scripture verses. Did I give you this? Mm -hmm. Okay. I typed it up the scripture verses. No, 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 let's see. Yes, you did. Right here? Okay. Yeah. Uh, in this le in the first lesson here, just so um, uh, 
I wanted everyone to be able to uh, I'll go home and read it, but I, I wanted to uh, cut down on time a little bit, so I went ahead and printed that up. And 2 Peter 1, 19-21, We have a more sure word of prophecy where we do well that you take heed as a, okay, that's what I just read. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation, for the prophecy came not in old times by the will of man, but by holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Now the comment that I have made for that is, uh, that is, I was always taught that that was, that prophecy was not for us the prophecy, and you can't possibly understand it uh, unless you go to Bible college. <laughs> and, and I thought, well, I went to Bible college, and I don't really understand it because we never talked about it. Mm -hmm. and, um, and that's not a criticism of Bible college. It's just, that's what they did. You know, that's how they did. They wanted to focus on Jesus Christ, and and I don't really blame them for that, but um, they don't. It's it seems like a lot of a lot of Christians back years ago didn't understand that prophecy focuses on Jesus as well, and God's plan for the world. But anyway, in a history written in advance is Daniel twenty one thirty one for forty five, and that. Uh, that this is a great example, but it's a uh, in Daniel. It's it's about the image of uh, the king. Daniel, the king had the image of Babylon of a great statue, and, and that's in covered in that. And it is so. Let's see. The image head was gold, his breast and arms of silver, his belly and thighs of brass, his legs of iron, and feet of part of clay, iron and clay. Thou saw that the stone was cut without hands, which smote the image upon his feet that were iron and clay, and break them into pieces. Then was iron, the clay, the brass, the silver, and the gold, broken into pieces together, and became like the shaft of some refreshing force. And the wind carried them away, and no place was found for them. And the stone that smote the image became a great mountain and filled the whole earth. Now, a lot of people dismiss they they dismiss the prophet the prophetic sim symbolism in that. And of course, those the interpretation is from the Bible in verse thirty six. This is the dream, and we will tell the interpretation there before the king, thou king of kings, for the God of heaven hath given that. King, the power and strength and glory. And whosoever children of men dwell, the beasts of the field, and the fowls of the heaven, and he gave thy hand and made thy ruler over them. Thou art the head of gold. So he told the king, This is, you are the head of gold, you're the first world empire. The second and third world empire was Medo Persia and Greece. And after that shall rise a kingdom inferior to thee. So as they went down and another kingdom of brass, which shall bear ruler. The metal got less precious as it went down, you know, so mm -hmm. down to the image. And uh, it's the world empires. And after these shall rise above the kingdom inferior to thee, and the third kingdom of the brass, which shall bear ruler of the earth. So they, these are earthly kingdoms that, that, uh, that was given for interpretation to the king and Daniel. And I don't know if you remember this, but the king wouldn't tell anybody about the dream. He just expected them to explain it. And so Daniel said, well, I'll go home. Basically, I'll sleep on it. And he came back, and he he's talking to the king now, telling him what the dream meant, and what the dream was, and what the dream meant. And the fourth kingdom is your strongest iron, which is Rome, for his iron breaking pieces Subdued all things, and iron that breaketh all these shall break into pieces and bruise. And whereas thou saw the feet of toes partly potter's clay and partly of iron, the kingdom shall be divided. But there shall be the strength of the iron, for as much thou the iron mixed with miry clay. So it will be partly strong and partly weak. And that's the 
the last kingdom will be from the Rome from Rome. And then as the toes and the feet were part of water and part of clay, so the oh check out the second second sheet. Well anyway. Yeah, I got it. You got it? Uh-huh. See. Let's see. And came partly strong and partly broken. And as I saw iron mixed with miry clay, they shall mean themselves of the seed of men, and they shall not cleave to one another. And even as iron is not mixed with clay. And, and there's a lot of interpretation of that. But a lot of different things about the what he meant by that last part there. But in, basically, it'll be partly strong and partly weak. And then, and then the last part, and the days of these kings shall be the God of heaven set up the kingdom which shall never be destroyed. The last part is the kingdom of, of Christ. And for as much as I saw that the stone was cut out of the mountain with hands, and it break in pieces the iron, the brass, the clay, the silver, the gold, and it'll crush the whole statue. And God had made known to the king what shall come to pass hereafter. And the dream is certain, and the interpretation is sure. So it gave us kind of that statue and that dream, the history of the world. <laughs> so, and then uh, 2 Timothy on this on the sheet. 2 Timothy, all scripture is given by the inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for proof, for correction, for instruction in the righteous. And um, I, I just, I think that's, Pretty clear that everything that is written down is not not just so we'll know, but it's for instruction. But anyway, the definition the definitions of Bible prophecy it's written, history written in advance. God read for telling of His will, Second Timothy three sixteen, the application of God's words to the sins of society, and the reasons to study. Bible prophecy. Uh, we worship the God of prophecy. And here's some examples in Isaiah 46, 9 through 11. I am God and there is no other. I am God and there is no one like me. Verse 10, declaring the end from the beginning and from the ancient times, things which have not been done, saying, My purpose will be established and I will accomplish all my good pleasure. Number 11, truly I have spoken, truly I will bring it to pass. I have planned it, surely I will do it. God is saying that he was the one and only true God and that he can prove it because he has the wisdom to know the future and the audacity to proclaim it and the power to see it. And what he declares comes to pass. And the fulfillment of Bible prophecy assures us of God's sovereignty. Psalm 103, 19, the Lord has established his throne of heavens and his sovereignty rules over it all. And I'll skim the rest of this because I want y'all to I want y'all to go home and read this book. And um, I'll have, for those of you that couldn't come here today, I'll, I'll leave the uh, first two chapters at the church office so you can pick it up if you could read on it. And fulfilling the prophecy validates the Bible as the word of God. And then um, believers and Christians live as the the Bible as man's search for God. Fulfilling prophecies prove that the Bible is God's revelation to man. The quantity of prophecy in the Bible demands its attention. Between one-fourth and one-third of the Bible is prophetic uh, in nature, according to Barton Payne's Encyclopedia of Biblical Prophecy. There are 6,641 verses in the Old Testament, 1,711 in the New Testament contain some predictive material. All these verses simply to be put on the shelf and ignored. In 1 Thessalonians 5.20, the apostle wrote, Do not despise prophecies. Prophecy validates Christ, Jesus Christ in the flesh. And uh, that's... Revelation 19.10, the angel of the heaven declared the Apostle John that prophecy is witness of Jesus' divinity, for the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Jesus fulfilled 109 separate prophecies, and I, th I thought just, I was fascinated by that. Um, I don't know if you, you know, I was just fascinated that 
109 laws of probability that one person could have fulfilled all the prophecies, that he'd be born a virgin, etc. That he all the things. Psalm 22 is everything he said on the cross. If you read Psalm 22. So those study studying this, you we're gonna have a lot, there's gonna be a lot of Bible reading, a lot of studying it. So um and it is, prophecy can be an effective tool in evangelism. And um, something that um, Mr. Nunley brought out was whenever he taught a Bible study class, that's what people wanted to talk about. They were curious about it. And so he ended up usually always taking time to teach Bible prophecy. And um, prophecy can affect moral teaching. And I believe that's true. Biblical prophets did not spend their time talking about the future. They spent much more time foretelling the present than foretelling the future. This means they took the word of God and applied it to the problems of their day by denouncing idolatry and hypocrisy. And they give some verses there. And the prophecy can be a stim stimulus for spiritual growth. And I find that to be true because uh, when you study prophecy, you understand the gospel of Jesus. You really, really do. How important it was that Jesus came and died for us. How important for us to believe that, that he's our savior, that he can save us from our sin, that God had that plan in place so we could get forgiveness and redemption. And it's a great gift, God's redemption. It's a great, great gift that we have that. Because we can't do our own holiness. <laughs> we can't do it. Um, and that's, you, you can look over that. And then, two, uh, a big thing, especially today, is prophecy provides hope. So you can read all that. And there's some questions at the end if you can't think of any questions. And then in, in lesson two, which I found really... Um, the number one reason why people don't want to study prophecy, and it's been because of the abuse of prophecy, <laughs> and not just, uh, well, for one, uh, they, I've heard this over and over again growing up. It's too complex. It's too controversial. It's Old Testament. It doesn't apply. It's too scary. <laughs> or it's, They'll say it's pie in the sky. I used to have a, a teacher in middle school. And when he talked about the religions of the earth, he would say about Christianity, say. He would say, of course, now they say much worse in school <laughs> about, about Christianity and about, he said, oh, it's apple pie in the sky by and by. And I didn't know what to say to that. You know, I'm a, I'm a young teenager and I'm like, you're just dismissing all of Christianity as just hopefulness and while it does bring hope it's you know it's like it's not just that it's something more, much more glorious and then um, a big thing is um, I've heard you know when um, in the past when anytime I've uh, talked to people about revelation and prophecy they'll say it's too divisive People will get upset. It, it stirs up too much controversy. And I thought, well, if you haven't studied it, why would you say <laughs> say that? And then, um, of course, the abuse the abuse of prophecy is is really uh, there's there's people that are apostate Christians and they use prophecy to scare people to give them money, you know, and um, and then, then the, the, one of the abuses is um, through Christianity, they have spiritualized the prophecies. In other words, they've kind of twisted it around to make it mean what they think it means and really not sure. And they'll spiritualize it. And that way you can manipulate it and have it mean whatever you want and uh, not have a clear definition. And of course, uh, number three on page 12, the fanatics. 
And we all know those, the, the people that set dates. There was a guy named Harold Camping years ago. You know, he wrote books about, you know, uh, was it 88 Reasons Why Jesus Will Come Back in 1988? And that's talking about the rapture of the church. And um, then, and then uh, another reason is apathy. They just don't care. They just, I believe in Jesus. I'm going to heaven. Jesus saved me. And why do I need to worry about that? And, um, but um, they need to understand that prophecy is a very loving God telling of his plan and that he has everything covered. <laughs> so I thought that was a good, you know, good start. And I hope that, uh, I hope and pray that everybody is open to this and that they can come and seek for themselves and study on their own. And if they have any questions, I'll try to have midweek, I'll try to have a video. Um, so you all can, um, uh, you know, we can get our questions answered and talk and stuff like that, you know. So, um, and if we want to meet, if anybody wants to meet, if there's anything really heavy that, that you want to talk about, we can schedule a, a, like a talking discussion time during the week. Because some of the, some of the stuff's really, you know, kind of intimidating. But um, it's, also, it, it's also a great comfort to study these things because you, you kind of see that something's going on and you want answers, mm -hmm. you know. Why, why is this going on? Why isn't God stepping in? And, you know, and, um, and there's some things to think about too. I mean, uh, America, you know, Russia is in Bible prophecy, all the Middle East, Israel, Libya, all those places are in Bible prophecy. You talk, you hear about them in the in the end. You hear about them when they talk about the end, like in Ezekiel 37, 38, or the later years, or 38 and 39. I'm sorry, the regathering of Israel from the world is in Ezekiel, and um, all these things, all these countries are in Bible prophecy are around today, but America's not mentioned. And China's not mentioned. And so here are the big superpowers. Now Russia is too. Mm -hmm. But Russia gets judged. But um, I just, you know, I know, what's in the news right now? China and Russia. And so, so something's, you know, things are happening. And we need to be aware. And so we can spread the word and spread the gospel. That's what, that's the big thing. Is um, and if you have some knowledge of Bible prophecy, it helps you do that, you know. So that's it, and I'm going to say a little prayer <laughs> and let you go. <laughs> so, uh, dear Lord, I thank you for this time that we can study your word and understand it. And dear Lord, um, I just just thank you for. Um, those of us who are going to watch this tape and Trudy and <laughs> everybody came to my class and uh, I pray that the books come in. I pray for those that are sick. I pray for those who are afraid that this may comfort them. And Father, I just thank you that this church is learning to have this class and um, um, I just, uh, it's a good day when we can study prophecy. And uh, that should do it. Um, yeah, oh, just along with thanking for Jesus who saved us from our sins, who forgives us, who guides us. And I just praise him. In Jesus' name, amen. Good. Good, good. Um.